In today's Minecraft video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this. A very odd and very small house that you literally have to swim or crawl through. It's only one block tall. You can go in and out and have the base completely hidden. Let's take a look at how this is done. In Minecraft 1.14, one of the weirdest and most wonderful features has been added and it involves a trap door. Observe, if I open the trap door and stand next to it and then right click it to close it, it pushes me downwards and it looks absolutely silly. It, look, it looks the most silly thing I've seen in Minecraft in a long time. You don't move at all. Normally when you're standing up, there's like a little bit of movement. You can see your arms sort of sway side to side, but not on here. You're completely still. But what this means, being able to crawl along the floor, is that we can make a base that's only one block high. I think this is a very unique place for a starter base, and I figured out a way to make it completely hidden. So let's begin. The first thing that you're going to want to do to make it hidden, shall we say, let's do the one high bit later. To make it hidden, you're going to want to find a cliff that looks a little bit something like this with an overhang of a couple of blocks or so. Choose where you want your entrance to be. So I'm going to make mine here and then mine out a few blocks so we've got some space to work with. But let's leave this part for now, now that we know where our entrance is going to be because we're actually going to have to dig down a little bit underneath as well. Now the redstone we're going to do here is incredibly simple and not too difficult to get your hands on. All you're going to need is two pistons, one that goes right here. And this is because if you stand here, a piston will do the exact same job as a spruce door. It will push you down like so. The second one is going to be right here because that's where the block extracts from. So you can imagine what happens. The redstone is going to activate, that's going to come down, that's going to extend and you'll be able to go inside the base and then it will close behind you. But how do we activate it without anything being seen? Well for this we're going to use a puffer fish detector. And in order to make this a lot easier to see, I'm actually going to take this out into the open so that you can see and copy the redstone much easier. It should make this a lot faster as well. So now that I've taken it above ground, so much easier to see, what we're going to do is make the entrance exactly where we were. And we're going to add the piston in right here where we said, and the one down here as well. Now we just need to learn how to connect this all up. And like I said, we're going to use a puffer fish detector. So the reason that you need this overhang is because there is a little bit of redstone being hidden. So something like that, which was completely naturally generated or somewhere like that, is perfect for this kind of door. So when you make your puffer fish detector, all you need is a half slab and a couple of tripwire hooks. You put the bucket of puffer fish right in here and then a string above it. Now I'm in creative mode, so this guy isn't going to hurt me. I think you should save the puffer fish bit right to the end if you're doing this in survival. Just a little tip. Now this is going to be our activator. Now all that needs to be done is for us to link up this tripwire hook to the two pistons in the correct way. So this, let's start with the bottom one which is a little bit more difficult. We need a redstone repeater right in front of it. We need to activate that so that it starts extended. And then we need to lead this all the way up here. But remember, the entrance to your base needs to be completely hidden. So if you make a tunnel past all the redstone, it keeps it nice and safe. But overall, very, very easy to do. There we go. And then all we need to do is the same here. So that's it for the redstone. It, there's probably a million different ways to make this redstone better. This is green redstone, if you like. So all we've got to do now is walk up to it. You hear the puffer fish. It activates the redstone. It pushes you down and reveals the entrance and you walk in or crawl in this, <laughs> this weird space. 
This is so cool. I don't- I never thought that you'd be able to do that in Minecraft. And then when you get far enough away, the puffer fish goes smaller, and then it all gets hidden again. Now all I need to do is place all of this over there. Okay, so I've copied it in over here, just that, that exact same design, and I've made it work here. So if I stand right in the correct spot, it pushes me down, and then I can walk in. You do have a little bit of a tunnel, but we'll come back to a feature that we can make use of later on. So now, let's talk about the actual design of this very, very strange base. So let's make a few rooms like we would normally. I believe that in this base, we can include absolutely everything that we would in a full-sized base, if you like. And you don't even have to worry about mobs spawning because they can't spawn in this space, but you will want some light so that you can see. So I think the first thing that we're going to do is make a couple of rooms. And you don't have to have it all on the same level. We can actually have a staircase. The second, however, that you make two blocks in this base, you will immediately stand up, which is really annoying. So you have to do this, where you make, you just get a trap door and you push yourself down. But yeah, it's, it's really annoying, so be careful about that. But the way that we end up doing a staircase is by using snow, one of the only blocks that actually goes up in increments of pixels, which is really useful. So we'll have to create a few of these in order to make just a step down, because if we have a slab here, it means that we'll end up in the crouching phase, because you can actually crouch under the things now, which is... I'm so glad that they added this. So you need to add a few at a time. I think you can go up two pixels at a time, maybe even three. So hopefully that will work. We'll have to test it to find out. So to test this, we go down, we can fit through here. Now this is a full height, so we might need to add a slab in there for that to work. And it might take a little bit of a trial and error. And then this will probably make me crouch, so I'll add another one there. And there we go. We've got a fully crouching staircase all the way down. So all of that, four blocks, just to go down one layer. So to be honest with you, it might be a lot easier to just have it all on one level. But we'll have two rooms just for the sake of this video. I do feel a little bit like a sewer rat. So what I think we're going to do is change this stone to something a bit more bright, so it feels less like a cave. However, there are many styles you could use for this, literally any block you like, but I do recommend keeping them all the same. So I think what we're going to change this to is a lighter block, maybe a concrete of some kind. This might take a little while, but ultimately this base is so small and so compact Building this takes no time at all, which is why I'm saying this works as a starter house. The only difficult thing to get your hands on is a puffer fish. And even that you can find with a little bit of exploring. Okay, so now that we've got the entire base all looking nice and bright, it doesn't look just like a cave anymore, let's talk about how we can decorate this and make it actually like any other base. The first thing is storage. Now, if we placed a chest here, obviously that wouldn't work because you'd place it down and you wouldn't be able to open it unless you put something above it like a staircase or a slab. But we don't need that anymore because we have barrels. This doesn't fit in with our concrete theme. However, if we place some barrels down like this, that takes care of all of our storage needs pretty much because you don't need any space to be able to open them. We can decorate it in any way that we like. We can add item frames like we would anywhere else. We could even add some paintings. Now you don't actually have to put end rods like this. There are other ways of lighting it without ruining anything. So what you can do is place end rods like so and you won't stand up underneath them. I don't really know why, but you don't. So this gives the illusion that there's more space without actually having that problem. You could even create just a whole line of these, but I imagine you might stand in the middle here. So wouldn't recommend that at all. And now I'm stuck again. There we go. So that takes care of some storage and some lighting. You can even decorate your base with some carpet if you want to. Not that you really don't need any more space on here, but you can. You can add a carpet to make it seem, well, even smaller. 
Of course, there's even more things that you need in a base, and one of those is enchanting. Now, you can fit this in even if it is a bit awkward to set up. So you will need your enchanting table in the middle, and then you need to surround it with bookshelves as you would normally, but in a bit more of a inconvenient way, like so. And then I'd recommend adding some lights, but maybe for this one, what we can do is use some lanterns which actually hang in here quite well. You could either hang them from the roof and they hover just a tiny bit, or you could just place them on the ground. It's entirely up to you. Now, just to prove that this gives you all of the levels of enchanting, if I put a diamond axe in here, I just need some lapis and there's enough for it. So absolutely fine with this design. It just doesn't happen to fit in with my style. So that takes care of enchanting, which is a big thing, storage, lighting, and decoration very very big things but there are even more that we can fit in so let's go downstairs shall we one block of course one of the big things that you would want in your base is a nether portal and this is actually a big thing because you can't actually make a nether portal that's just this big so you've got to unfortunately make a full sized one but then kind of just block it off and I'll show you a little trick so that you can still use it. Now, obviously, I would like this centered, so I'd love the nether portal to be here in the middle. However, it will work best if you put it off to the side, and that will make sense in a minute. So, I've got my nether portal here, and going in, super easy. It's coming back that's the issue. So, once we go back into the nether, obviously, we start standing up. So, we've got to figure out a mechanic to get back down there. What I would recommend doing is blocking off the back end of it and then having one trap door maybe in the middle and then you can walk in and then you push yourself down like so. Actually, let's change that to birch so it matches everything. And this acts pretty much as you would expect. So if we add the nether portal back, we go in, we do whatever it is you do in the nether, we go back and then we use the trap door to go back down into our base. Perfect. Now, obviously, if you want to hide that, you might be better off hiding it just round the corner or something like that. Other things that you might want to do are pretty simple. So you might want to add some farms in. Other things you might want to do that make this place a bit more survival friendly. Now, I, I do imagine that no one's going to make a full scale base because moving around here is so slow. But as a starter base, as a very quirky thing, I think it's actually really, really cool. You don't need any full size for crops. You can have crops down here just like that and you can create a pretty cool looking farm of whatever you want, basically. Now, there is actually a little bit of an issue if you want a bed, because if you have a bed and you sleep in it, when you come back, you will suffocate. So if you do want to set your bed here, I recommend making a full-size bedroom and then a trap door to go with it, which kind of ruins the effect a little bit, don't you think? And then with the leftover space, you can add any of the extra blocks that you might need in your day to day. And you can access these because you don't need the full scale. The only one that you do is the ender chest. And of course that is very, very useful. So what you need to do for the ender chest is actually add a slab over the top like so, which is a little bit annoying, but not also not the end of the world. You can make it work or an upside down staircase or something like that doesn't really hurt anything, but that's pretty much it for this design. So let's go back outside and do a full tour. Okay, so I've hopped into survival mode and this is the full hidden one block tall house. So you go into your allotted position where you know where the puff fish is. It pushes you down. You head inside through a short tunnel and there is one actual improvement we could do here. You add a pressure plate here and a dispenser with speed two potions. Or you add a beacon nearby, it's up to you. Either way, it makes it just a little bit quicker when you're looking around. And then you welcome to my humble abode. So you crawl around, you can see all the storage in the form of barrels. You've got an ender chest, painting for decoration. We've got the enchanting table. We've got lights everywhere. And if we go downstairs, we have a nether portal, all of the blocks you might need for crafting and a little farm to go with it. This is an incredibly unique house, and I'm very, very excited to show you all. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. It is the silliest thing. <laughs> it looks like I'm swimming through my house. Obviously, this house is one block high, but you can go 1.5, and this 
is even more hidden. Because unfortunately, when you're crawling along the floor, players can see your name tag, which doesn't make much sense, but they can't while you're crouching. So if you want to see a 1.5 truly hidden house, let me know in the comments. How do I get out? Like, I guess that's, I guess that is truly the end of the video. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun experimenting with this design and I think this is an excellent mechanic. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.